In this example, let's take a look at how average rate of change can come up in a word problem. Now by word problem here, I'm just referring to a problem that involves some type of real world situation or context, such as this one where we're talking about a rock that is thrown off a cliff. And we're told that the height in meters of the rock above the ground, t seconds after it is thrown, is given by our function h at t here. And we're asked to find the average rate of change of the rock's height between two and three seconds. So how do we do this? Well, remember that the average rate of change is just a single slope. So we're going to calculate a slope. A slope of what? Well, the slope of the line that joins the point on our graph at two and the point on our graph at three seconds. That line is called a secant line. So we're talking about finding the slope of a secant line. Now you can imagine if we actually had the graph here, this is a downward opening parabola. Perhaps we have a point here at two seconds, so t equals two, and a point here at three seconds, t equals three. Our average rate of change is just the slope of the line that joins those two points together. And that's what we're gonna find here. Now we don't need a graph to actually find this slope. We can do it without that. So how do we do it? Well, let's take a look here. We'll start by saying average rate of change equals, now we know it's a slope, which is rise over run. Here, our rise refers to our change in height. So our difference in height values and our run is the change in time. Okay, the difference between our two time values. Now the change in time, we know we're dealing with uh, times of two and three seconds. So we'll find the difference in those by doing three minus two, okay? Our second time value minus our first time value. But what about height? How do we find the change or the difference in height? Well, we need the height values that go with these time values. And how do we find a height value that goes with a time of three seconds? Well, we use our equation. Okay, if we were given a graph or a table, we could probably just read the height value that goes with three seconds from one of those things. But in this case, we don't have that. We have an equation. So we can find the height uh, that goes with a time of three seconds by finding h at three, which really just means we're going to sub three seconds into our equation here. And we can do the same for our height that goes with a time of two seconds. We'll just find h at two. And of course we wanna find the difference of these two things here. That's our, our rise. That's like our y2 minus our y1, if you think of it that way. So what do we get for that? Well, for h at three, I'm going to just sub three into our function here and see what I get. Now I'm gonna do that with my calculator right now. So we have negative 4.9 times t plus one. So that's going to be three plus one, which is four squared. Uh, plus 108, and that gives me 29.6 meters. And I'm going to do the same thing with a time of two seconds. I'm gonna sub two into that function to get our corresponding height. So negative 4.9 times two plus one, that's three, squared plus 108. That gives me 63.9 meters. And I'm subtracting those two values. I wanna find the difference over, well, whatever three minus two is, that's just one. So we have 29.6 minus 63.9. Of course, if you want to, you can divide that result by one, but it won't make any difference. We end up with negative 34.3. Now let's talk about the units for this rate of change. Our height is measured in meters and our time is measured in seconds. So when we talk about our rate of change, our units will be meters per second, all right? So notice also we have a negative rate of change here. Uh, that's probably not surprising because we're talking about a rock thrown off a cliff. At that point, the rock is falling. And in this case, the upward direction is the positive direction. So it makes sense that as our rock is falling here, we have a negative rate of change. It's moving in that downward or negative direction. So there you go, a quick example of how we can find average rate of change when it shows up in a type of word problem.